looks. Sorry for the introduction in Polish. I need to let them know that we're going to yeah, speak English. Yeah, of course. Uh, I get most parts of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> więc y, zapraszamy do obejrzenia. Niedługo będziecie mieli Państwo okazję zobaczyć też w 100% z napisami nasz filmik na YouTube, na Facebooku i wszędzie, gdzie się da. So, back into the conversation. <laughs> uh, I've read your book and as I told you, it's horrendous, <laughs> it's terrifying. It's everything that I didn't want to know about the world, probably. Yeah, but now you know and how do you feel now? I, I feel worse. Okay. I feel worse, probably. If, if you didn't know, uh, Kukolka is a doll and, uh, and, and it's a story about Samira, uh, a little girl who is more or less a little girl throughout all the book, to be honest, that uh, was born in, I can't really pronounce the name of the city. Dnipropetrovsk. There. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going through the struggle of being in an orphanage, then she uh, lands on the street, she wants to find her friend that was adopted and went to live in Germany, where you live, so I guess it's a little bit uh, inspired by you, this character of Marina? Uh, no, not, not really. really, not really, but uh, I used uh, for the, yeah, for the places, I used places I know, so mm -hmm. yeah, I can describe them vivid and, and so I know what I'm writing about. So, you know, mm -hmm. otherwise I could also like uh, let Samira be maybe in, uh, in Poland and um, the friend move to the US. But I do not know so much about Poland in the 90s and also about US. So yes, I've seen <laughs> I, you wrote only one paragraph about our country that our toilets are nice. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so um, the book is really multifaceted, to be honest. It's, it reminded me of few other books and I think that is something that a writer really wants to hear that uh, yeah. <laughs> this book reminds me of other books uh, yeah. but I think that hopefully I, I good books yeah th th both of them are good I would situate it somewhere between um, train spotting for once mm -hmm. and um, oh, trans oh is that I feel very honored yeah nice and Mr. Kuczynski's uh, um, painted bird uh, mm. have you read it no, Is but if yeah, if it's similar, I need yeah, I need to read it. It's about Could be a fit a for me. Uh, Jewish or a gypsy boy that is uh, running from Nazis. Painted bird. Yeah, or something. I, oh. I I don't know what's translation. It's malovane ptak in Polish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's really similar book. I hope I will find it in German. You will probably. It's it was a really big uh, book in sixties probably or seventies. Nice. Yeah, you need to give me the name of the author later. I will, um, yeah. here's a Kuczynski, this, and I will probably show it to you and find it in yeah, the translation. Yeah, because the name will be gone by the end of this conversation. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I will mesmerize it. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I think mm, your book uh, says the really similar story to the one in, in, in Tree Spotting or, or in, in Malvan Ptak uh, or whatever it's called, because it's a story about how we are pressed into the circumstances that we really cannot control. Yeah. And, and it's in your book, it's the most tragic one because it starts without uh, the person in question having even uh, consciousness, really. It, it's like, it, it's, it's a little girl that she really doesn't even know how to read, she doesn't know how to write, and she's put in these dire circumstances be just because she's in this historical moment. Yeah, yeah, so that's what happens to a lot of people yeah, and they, they, s they are often unseen, their stories are untold, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, wh how did you come about this story? Because I think that there are many of them, so uh, I guess it's probably a compilation of some. Um, I, I, yeah, I can't really tell because it started with a character and the character uh, shown herself in a uh, in a creative writing mm -hmm. uh, workshop I went to, um, yeah, and then there was this character and yeah the story and her beginning and also this tragic development with this um, being on the street being criminalized because yeah or yeah or like developing to a criminal because adults who supposed to to care for you. Mm -hmm just use you um, and also the the forced prostitution thing in Germany and um, everything came together and 
at first I was overwhelmed and I, I wasn't sure if I do want to write about such a topic. Mm -hmm. Then I started researching um, and as, yeah, as I was researching I understood I can't stop thinking of these topics and these people and I will need to write this novel and to yeah to give to give this this story like a proper moment mm -hmm. um yeah so it took me three years to write it and to research bit by bit and um yeah and to be very concrete with the steps and also with the psychology of such a girl um, and also the violent pro, uh, protagonists in my mm -hmm. book. I needed also to research to people like that. That was maybe the most hard part mm -hmm. on writing. To be kind of um, understanding them or feel into them because mm -hmm. there are not people you would normally like to feel into, you know. And as a reader, you can just just back up and say like oh yeah just assholes and i hate them but as mm -hmm. a writer i need to understand their thinking and their point of view so i can't create a whole person who is mm -hmm. not just flat and just a bad guy mm -hmm. but with a history and stuff and also own traumata mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it shows I, I think that it's really interesting portrayal of this relationship for example with something we would call a, a pedophile yeah. on today's standards yeah. in, a, in a character of Dima that is really... Uh, and also Rocky. And Rocky. Of yeah. And that, that, but I, I think about Dima in other terms because Rocky it was abusive all along. In Dima it was shown that he, it's, it's not like he was uh, abusive from the start, from abusive from the start for her. Uh, in some depends ways... depends. Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm talking about this because I feel like she was in such a bad situation that mm. even uh, upgrading to a pedophile that doesn't beat you uh, yeah. or, or is, isn't threatening your life, gives you uh, uh, warm water and food, is an advancement in your life. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that, I like that it was nuanced. I like that it wasn't just like you said, a really bad guy that does bad things, but he, he has this second part of him and she had the second part of his re her relationship to her. Yeah. Uh, so, so like for example, when she was really young and she was discovering her sexuality, yeah. it, it's, it wasn't always abusive. No. But it was abusive for our standards uh, yeah. like in legal terms right. and everything. But she didn't feel abused in every interaction with him. Yeah. How did you come about it? Because I, I feel like it would be really controversial. Yeah, I think it is a very interesting topic. Like, um, yeah, you pictured it very well. There are some, some standards and it is an abusive situation because he is an adult and mm. he is in charge mm -hmm. and he is doing something criminal. Yeah. Like he's sexual with a very young girl and that's criminal mm -hmm. to do. But also for her not knowing the standards, not knowing um, what's okay about the own sexuality and what's not. Mm -hmm. I wanted her, like it's, it's a little bit like an extra part on it because there are a lot of women who started their sexual history very young and the society is telling them, no, you are too young for that, you mm -hmm. are too young to feel that, to want this. Or also, oh, now you're too old <laughs> because, yeah, there is a very small period of time you have to start your sexuality, like your sexual journey mm -hmm. has to start like between maybe, I don't know, depends on the country, but maybe let's say 16 and 19, like this three years after it, it's weird. Mm -hmm. And before that, it's also not kosher. Yeah. So it's not good. So I wanted, but I, I personally know a lot of women who started uh, that sexual um, relationship very young and enjoyed it, but felt ashamed because mm -hmm. they knew it's not okay to have. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, uh, I wanted Zamira to just be shameless, just enjoy what she's enjoying and just 
yeah just talking about it like she would talk about food mm. like she would talk about clothes and she would talk about uh, like robbing some kiosk or something because it's just part of her world mm -hmm. and she has this older mate uh, who is like explaining to her in a very vulgar way how what sexuality mm -hmm. is it's also something I remember I had some older pals myself when I was a kid and how they were talking about sexuality it was yeah like disturbing but also they f it was like something very free mm -hmm. like out of this adult context where the people give you the right words and the right how it's mm -hmm. supposed to be you know so I wanted her like not to understand it and just just have something physical mm -hmm. which then turns um, into what it is from beginning on it is an abusive situation mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. and I, I really appreciated that because I, I know that uh, women it's not like they turn 16 or 18 and it's the first time that they have sexual thoughts about anyone uh, and they it's it's really important to like uh, talk about this in an um, interesting and engaging way because I feel like it's really a taboo uh, that is destroying the perception like you said like yeah, like you had uh, this those people that you talked with you know, probably yourself as well that you had some uh, integral need to do something internal in integral uh, push to for sexuality and it was just said no it's, it's too young you shouldn't have the thoughts um, on the other hand, uh, you really greatly portrayed, in my opinion, how this degenerative process goes. Like, uh, this child is really innocent at the beginning, right? Yeah. She, she doesn't like to steal, she doesn't like to beg for money, she, she yeah. just wants to live, she just wants candies, probably. Yeah. And with every step that she takes into this weird world, that they are telling her that it's okay to do so, because I tell you it's okay. Yeah. Um, you show this process of socialization really because everything's allowed within the society little society you know yeah. you live in right yeah so how, how what was your thought process about yeah that, that was very intentional to um, like to portray how yeah how we learn the rules how we fit in mm -hmm. the communities we are what is normal normal is was what people around us, like the five, the yeah. ten people around us, are telling us to be normal and to, who they are acting like this. If you are part of a family where it's normal to uh, fall asleep in front of the TV and you see your mother fall asleep in front of the TV mm -hmm. and your grandmother and your father and all your siblings, you do it and it's totally normal. And if you are like part of the community who is like praying in the morning that's uh, the most normal thing to do to pray in the morning mm -hmm. so we are doing what people around us are doing and telling us that's right and we want to fit in mm -hmm. that's what we want we want to fit in and we want also to do the right thing mm -hmm. and a child is often just trying to please the parents, if there are some parents, or the adults who are caring for this child. Mm -hmm. So um, it was also interesting for me like to understand not only my growing up, but, but from, from anybody, like to, to dive in and to try getting molecule by molecule what it is like to be socialized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever thought about this concept that for example, trauma comes from uh, going against the social expectations because um, like in this case, or maybe not in this case, but like if, if this story was put in some more uh, normal ground, uh, what would happen if uh, she was taken into even percentage of what happened to her as a normal girl? She would be totally traumatized, but because uh, this societal lines were uh, set so broadly in in the beginning of her life mm. she she uh, fought through it uh, in a different way i think it 
can depend just on the personality. And um, we have the figure of Dasha mm -hmm. in, and where we can see how she is like, she has a huge trauma and she can't deal with it at all. Mm -hmm. Like she's almost starving, she's cutting her hair, she's destroying herself, mm -hmm. she's very self-destructed. She can't deal with it at all. And Samira has like, um, that something very naive about her. She doesn't get any everything. Mm -hmm. And why sh while she's not getting it, it, it's like not hurting her them that much because she just goes through it. Like, yeah, she's, she's like this person who is like on a street, on a road and like having her eyes uh, shut and going mm -hmm. and no car will hit her just by chance, just, just by that, mm -hmm. you know? And she's that one person because anybody would be dead at that street with eyes closed, but not her. She has, and that's what sometimes children have. They have this very great resilience because they take their life as kind of a game mm -hmm. where everything will be okay. So they have such a strong belief that it's not evil what happening. So they just just go through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I driven. wanted her to be very resilient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was driven because perhaps she was on a mission in some way. Yeah, maybe, maybe because she was on a mission, yes. Yeah. Like if you have a goal in mind, it's easier for you to not care about what happens to you because you have this set mindset. Yes, yes, I think it, it, it's part of it. Um, and also because uh, she, she uh, didn't have like a big loss or something. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if she would be a child uh, who landed by Rocky because both parents were hit by a car or something and now she, you know, she, it would be such a great contrast to her former life mm -hmm. that maybe it would be um, she wouldn't like deal with it in such a way but because she's starting her life at the bottom there is no nothing she she can like fall down or, or hit any any bottom again mm -hmm. because she's starting at the bottom yeah yeah and how about this Mm, in some ways at least political aspect of this book because you really don't take any prisoners <laughs> every country has really really advanced uh, issues uh, within like Ukraine during perestroika it's 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 a terrible country it, it's wild it's it's full of corruption full of uh, evil people uh, mafias on the uh, streets and on the other hand, you have this cultured Germany when every, everything is okay on the first glance and this, this, this evil bad side you just swept under the rug and people from Ukraine or probably Poland at the time, probably Romania and, and many countries from the uh, former Soviet Union were, were just used, were just used as uh, for puppets, uh, toys for German people at the time. Um, what, what, what were we trying to accomplish? What were we trying to say with that? I just try to um, to to order everything I I remembered from Ukraine together with everything I researched over the prostitution and human trafficking in Germany during the time because the one thing is my what I remembered what what I saw on the streets what I knew from from the uh, television back then mm -hmm. like always the same stories about girls being dead girls being uh, forced to prostitution in uh, the emirates at turkey at um, uh, germany at uh, us and stuff like always the same stories um, always this war was um, um, chechenian war and then like the most brutal stuff came in like all the day from this television mm -hmm. and also like so many of friends of my family or 
some members who started uh, like their own business, like starting doing anything to survive, mm -hmm. got caught from this mafia around, were forced to pay money they haven't earned yet, then yeah, being molested, being killed. Mm -hmm. It was really awful and it was like yeah, I, 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 I had the feeling of I want to give everything of it in this novel because it will be it will be nice to do something with it with all this memory I'm always mm -hmm. carrying with me. Um, yeah, and also Germany. I mean, it was also a mix of wanting to show the people. I mean, when I wrote it, I wrote it for for Germans, you know, for a German audience. I, I, I mm -hmm. mean, I hoped it would get published mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, maybe some people will read it, but I mean, I haven't expected it to be in different countries and discussing with totally different socialization and um, mm -hmm. like people, you know, mm -hmm. because when I speak about it here in Poland, I think that people understand it in a different way. It's more close yeah. to them uh, it's, it's because it's being the post-Soviet yes. um, country, so they get this whole state of instability and mm -hmm. developing to a, yeah, to a, yeah, to a different country, you know, to, to, to find your more European um, side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and for the Germans, I wanted like to them to understand um, that the world they are living, it's not the whole Germany they know, because there are, s on the periphery, there are so many fucked up lives, and, and, and people who are like not considered part of Germany, like mm -hmm. Dima, he's not really considered part of Germany or Samira, they are just invisible, but it takes place there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and when I did the research about, uh, about this period of time, this 2000 till 2005 or seven. Mm -hmm most awful years because the prostitution get legalized which was kind of a good thing to decriminalize sex mm -hmm. workers and to give them more rights so they can like uh, call the police and tell like the, the, my, the mm -hmm. client doesn't want to pay yeah. or you know to give them rights but on the other hand it opened doors for all the criminals who brought all the eastern european women and girls, like very young girls, from Poland, from uh, Ukraine, from uh, Belarus, from Russia, from all that, from everywhere, like really it was a huge human trafficking time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was like, like I describe it in the book, it, it was a very decent research I did, like how much uh, would it cost to by a girl, mm -hmm. how much does she need to do per day, mm -hmm. how do you keep her like forever there because everything costs more than she will earn. Yeah. And yeah, most of them didn't survive this. Mm -hmm. We have to say this. Like, I wanted Samira to survive because she, I mean, I love her and I wanted her to survive this. Mm -hmm. So I was searching for stories of women and girls who were surviving it and um, yeah, and tried to find a way. I, I was searching for a way how some of the women survived this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was your first question? I forgot. I, I was driven. I, I think I answered it in yeah. the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, so let's talk about the issue uh, of um, sex work because it's, um, it's really portrayed in your book as uh, a rather, I would say, unpleasant activity in the uh, really delicate terms. Um, yeah. And from the early 2000s, it really developed. Uh, so, and some girls are even saying that it's their right to do it. Yeah, like yeah. They are doing this OnlyFans or they are, they are taking control of the business side of things. Totally. Uh, so, what is your opinion about that? Do you think that it's it, it's it goes 
it, it went into the good way that nowadays we can talk about sex work like it's not a stigma anymore. It is a stigma still, but that, yeah. it, it's lesser stigma than it was in the mm, 2000s. Yeah. And uh, how would you say that it uh, changed throughout the years? I think um, it, it developed and also in Germany also the law developed because uh, they were forced to mm -hmm. improve the law because they saw what happened. Um, um, at first, I need to say I'm not against sex work at all. I think sex work is work and people should be allowed to do with their bodies whatever they want to. Um, and if they do want to work with their bodies in this uh, erotic, sexual way, mm -hmm. and it might be just photos, it might be uh, webcams, it might be physical contact, I really don't care. What I'm caring about is people uh, being forced to do any work, mm -hmm. especially if it's like forcing them to do stuff with their bodies they don't want to, mm -hmm. especially if they are very young, especially if they get just raped. Mm -hmm. And that what I do have a problem with. And um, yeah, that was the topic about it. So it's, it's for me not like, oh yeah, prostitution is just evil. I mean, I know women who uh, were sex workers, uh, not forced ones, uh, they just did it and tried it out. And for all of them, I know personally, I don't know any, like everybody, and I mm -hmm. can't speak for everybody. For sure. But for, for those three or four girls, women, uh, trying this out, it was not that good for their psych. Mm -hmm. That's what I know. Um, but it was their choice, they tried it out, nobody fought them. Yeah, we can discuss if the financial reasons are forcing enough because, you know, the one needed like to have something she can, she was a single mom, needed to care for her child, but mm -hmm. also having something because the child was ill a lot and she was like, hmm, I do need a job. So yeah, you know, is it, is it forced enough? I don't know. Like there was not a human being, not somebody. Mm -hmm who told her to do this. She tried it out because she thought maybe it's a way for me to get along with mm. my life. And the other one she made, she, she was um, trying to um, get an artist. Uh, she was in an artist school, which was very expensive, but it was very time consuming. Mm. So she tried doing sex work so she can like do something in the night and have very quick money. It wasn't that good either, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and yeah, and then the two others had similar situations. So it wasn't, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe for people who just have, when it fits to your own sexual preference, that might be a fit. Mm -hmm. Like you have the sexual fantasy and preference of mm -hmm. sexuality with a client. Yeah. So maybe for these people, it's a total freedom and best thing ever. I think for people who are like trying it out because they just are searching for opportunities to get money, mm -hmm. maybe f for them it's not the best thing. But yeah, I think it's good we can talk about it. I think it's great we, uh, we are not criminalizing mm -hmm. these people. That's very important for me. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, it's improving and developing and and still, I'm very happy to um, have portrayed this specific time because n just because it's, it's over in this way, it doesn't mean it, it wasn't like um, um, important enough to, to remember and to mm -hmm. think about it and to know about it. Yeah, where it, where it came from, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I and how the beginning of this legalization mm -hmm. was, because... Yeah, in Poland it's like, it's, it's legal as if uh, you can do it, but there's no protection. Like, you can do it for you, uh, yeah. as, as a sex worker, but you, don't, you can't uh, have any, f any organization around you. Okay. So it's, it's 
it's not a good situation to be No, honest. it's a situation that yeah. could be improved, yeah. I think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's no taxes from it. Uh, okay, okay. Um, now in Germany it is. Um, yeah, and um, and now they, they, they are trying something which is again not very pleasant to a lot of sex workers because they try to registrate very strictly and it doesn't fit to the yeah to the actual way of working for them because they are like moving around a lot and that's what they're doing so they can't go and register themselves all the time mm -hmm. so it it forced people again to um like to break those rules it's mm -hmm. it's complicated i think it it need to be improved again yeah but as soon as there is um but it's good that it's it has to be yeah, it's, so it's good that it has to be improved, not change entirely. So yeah, yeah. So that's a good idea. I, I have this problem with sex work at all. Not like I have a problem, but I have a mental problem in my thoughts um, because I, I don't want to penalize it or anything. I should I think it should be legal at all. No criminalization. It should be f full disclosure. Everything. Uh, but I don't think that it should be recommended. I, I don't. I don't think that people should be encouraged to do it. I don't feel like it's... I d and then I can't go, go to this hoop of thinking that someone should encourage anyone that, yeah, sex work is uh, um, just another job like, like being a nurse or, or being a lawyer or something. Maybe it's because yeah. I was raised in, in those different times. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I think I, I have a problem with this term encouraging mm -hmm. because it's often used as an opener to like to for a taboo and to demonize yeah, stuff, yeah. you know? So I don't think any job should be like promoted or something. I mean, you could tell me not to promote uh, uh, or not to like um, glorify being an artist because yeah, sometimes it's it's not that great it so i such. shouldn't like encourage other people mm -hmm. like to follow their passion for writing or something because mm -hmm. pff, it can be tough but on the other hand i would tell you like no i'm not promoting it i'm just explaining how it's for me and mm -hmm. and sharing my story and i think that's what a lot of sex worker do you know yeah. they're just sharing their story and sharing their experience but they get told like, oh, you're promoting it. No, they're not. Yeah, that, that's not good. Mostly they're just sharing the experience. And mm -hmm. if it's a pleasant experience, a lot of people get scared and yeah, they're like, yeah. oh, it's too pleasant. You're promoting yeah, it. Yeah. But actually they are not. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And if we are as a society uh, don't have a, like really don't have a problem with that. So a lot more people, female and male and everything in between, um, who are interested in it could just try it out for a day, a month, or I don't know, and just go back mm -hmm. and everything would be fine. Like you can try to be um, a barista for a week and nobody will like make a stamp on you like, oh, you were a barista. Oh my God. I saw a photo of you. Like if we w wouldn't do this with, would, with yeah. sex workers, it wouldn't be such a problem, you know? Mm -hmm. People could go try it out and get back and like, oh, I saw a photo of you at OnlyFans. So it mm -hmm. would be like, yeah, I tried it. It's not for me. Yeah, it's not for me. And it would be like, oh yeah, and what, so what, what are you doing now for a living, <laughs> you know? But it's not like that. It's, it's like, like it's, that. it's still a taboo. Yeah, so why do you think it's, that's, it's like that? Why do you think that uh, you, can, you can't really become a part-time sex worker in most countries, probably in, in some, some liberated... Can, I, I, I don't even know if they're... Like in US or Canada, I don't think that oh, it would be okay. You no, know, they are, no. no. <laughs> they, they have their problems. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, what do you think about that? What, what do you think is the cause that we put so much emphasis that on, on sexuality uh, uh, that it's going to be, it has to be only for pleasure, only for uh, making chi children and everything? Um, because people are kind of uh, maybe afraid. They're afraid. Uh, that everything will develop and they still the same as they were mm -hmm. and then they are f 
wrong or something. They don't want to be wrong. They want to be right. Everyone mm -hmm. to want to be right. And um, people don't want changes. Mostly, most people do not want stuff to be changed. Even if it's, if, if it's not that good, it's safer to stay there yeah. where you are. It's for most people like this. It's very normal. Um, yeah, and sexuality is... Um, it's a very important topic of our life. Also, it's still very private. Even if we speak a lot about it, mm -hmm. it's still kind of private. Yeah. And um, yeah, and and sex workers, they like, you know, they are like breaking this taboo. They're just not talking about it or writing about it or making a movie where you can say like, oh no, everything played, it's not a real sex. No, 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 mm -hmm. they're just doing it. Yeah. And they're very open about it. And if they're right, like people who don't are wrong, right? Because we are, I think the societies are very like black and white. It's like wrong or right. Yeah. And they need to know, is it okay or is it not okay? Mm -hmm. But if it's okay, it's scary, then it might be an opportunity for me, but I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not comfortable just being like, it is okay, but it's also okay, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and okay. they are also always afraid, like, what if my daughter would, would do this? Mm -hmm. I need to tell you, if my daughter would do this, I just w would want her to to be comfortable and safe and living in a society which will not stigmatize her mm -hmm. so she has a way in and out yeah. as she wants and as she likes but it's not the case so yes okay. i would worry about my daughter because i know it's a very hard way out because there's always a stamp on you mm -hmm. so we could start working on the stamp i think <laughs> Yeah, let's work on this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Kukolka is a few years old now. Yeah. Uh, you, you are doing a little tourne <laughs> around <laughs> Europe uh, with it. And um, do you have anything in mind for now? Do you have anything in plans? Uh, yeah, in the meantime, I published the second book. Yeah. And in the meantime, I'm writing on my third book. Um, hope to finish it next spring, like coming spring finishing it uh, during the winter. I, I hope uh, the dark Berlin winter won't uh, ruin my mental health so I can still <laughs> write okay. it. Because yeah, Berlin winter and me, it's a difficult relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can also travel. <laughs> Come yeah. to us, it's a little darker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could travel, but yeah, I also have a child. So I, yeah, I need to most of the time be there for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not it's not that that easy. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing in in the meantime. Um, and also, I'm illustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, very passionate about that. Um, but what, what kind of ideas occupy your mind? What do you think about? Um, like right now, or what I'm writing about <laughs> right <laughs> now? <laughs> in general, let's in say. In general. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm a little bit scared about my my uh, my writing. I'm doing like right now the third novel because um, it's a lot more personal, and the protagonist is uh, very um, similar to me, mm -hmm. and it scares me because I I like to I like to be invisible in my books. I like mm -hmm. to just. Yeah, just to split up in, in 1,000 pieces and be everywhere in my mm -hmm. book, but nowhere. Yeah. But here I, I will be very, yeah, prominent there and that makes me vul vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it scares me, <laughs> but I think it, uh, it's, it's the right time because... Um, yeah, because I, I really do want to break this, my, my own taboo by that and mm -hmm. um, to write about me, to write about my family and um, also like living as an artist and uh, being a queer woman and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, about all the stuff 
like to be honest about it and yeah being vulnerable it's scary but i scary. think it's good <laughs> it's good scary <laughs> it will make me um more free maybe and maybe it will make some readers also like give them empowerment and comfort well you were looking for freedom kokolka <laughs> yeah i'm always looking for freedom <laughs> okay <laughs> well that, that's a noble <laughs> uh, noble thing to do, I think. Uh, so you can buy Kukolka in Poland, uh, in, in Polish, <laughs> let's add. Uh, and it's a really interesting book. It's, it's a good book. It's, uh, it has Is it a quick read? Uh, I don't was know it if it's a quick, quick read. read for you? I don't know. It I, wasn't? I, I was reading it quickly, but I, have to do, I had to do some uh, pauses because it was a bit on the horrible end. <laughs> so yeah, you're a sensitive person. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't really, I can't really, I, I have to process some stuff. When yeah, I it's it. good, it's good. That's, thank you. <laughs> I think it's really good. I mean, there are some people tell, like not some, like a lot of people telling me they read it in one night. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because uh, Zamira is telling the whole story yeah, in, one in one night. night. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm always like amazed by those people. I, I think I have never read a book in one night, my whole life. But there are also some people, they tell me that it took them longer because they needed the poses to process everything. Mm -hmm. And I love both of this type of readers because the ones that were so passionate about it to read it the whole night, but the others took the time to process and I'm always like thankful for them, like mm -hmm. thank you for your time spending with processing the story. I spent so much time to to write mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, I feel very honored, like people giving their, the precious thing they have, their lifetime, their time mm -hmm. to the story. And it's, yeah, it's touching me every time. <laughs> well, it, it's a good book, so you don't have to <laughs> be ashamed. Uh, uh, so, uh, well, let's end it in a style. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> everyone, for uh, interacting with us during this moment. We're going to add subtitles uh, later, because as you can see, it's live, so <laughs> we <laughs> can do it live. And yes, yeah, so I, I can really recommend this book. Um, it's not one of these books that is horrific and you just go powering through it because the language is so bad. The, the language in this book is actually really good. I don't know if it's from translation or maybe... I think it's in, in, in the book. I, the, the wording from the perspective of a young girl that grows, it really shows. Like she's thinking of other stuff as she gets older, as she gets more uh, intelligent, as she gets more aware about yeah. her, her entire surroundings. So yeah, it's a good read. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. See ya.